score. Okay, I gotta pay attention. <coughs> so I was thinking the United States system is a federated system, right? So we actually have, if we would use it, a general purpose way to deal with their differences. But then there's a drawback to going too crazy with the method. Like, um... I was going to say, like, California and this tax thing, but I was trying to research this, because my understanding is the requirement for the taxes is in the primary and not in the general. But then I saw somebody, one of these guys that's on Ring of Fire, but he shows up as guest on a lot of people's... Um, he was saying it was going to be for the general election. and I mean, that he said, actually, he think it's, it's going to be challenged in court. And won't be in the general election, um, uh, but, but that it's meant to be right. Like if it doesn't get defeated in court, so I don't know which of those is true, but I could deal with both of those situations. I'm um, doing it in the primary. I don't know. It's a difference. Um, there's a difference between both of them. Um, on the one hand, it is you know part of our federal system, like with you know what counts as murder. Uh, who can be on the ballot and all of those details, you know, uh, traditionally left to the states. But there's some laws that have changed things, like how um, senators were elected and whatnot. But it does go to the states, but so, okay, fine. If we can't agree on whether you should have taxes or not as a nation, then the states get to decide, you know. However, uh, you know, states could in that case if they're if they're right to make demands you know they can make all kinds of demands okay. and you know they could be arbitrary they could cheat you know and um, or, or not cheat it could be things that they actually believe like we won't unless people believe in you know, our right to life amendment to our state constitution you know we won't send our electors things like this so you know we could solve that with laws and stuff but right now you know it's a matter of if you federate too much you take too much individual right as a state to do something for example with elections um, you know it could get out of hand right eventually um, It could, you know, it just, and what I mean is it might get out of hand where it falls apart and the union can't, you know, for, there's a tit for tat and the union falls apart. So that part of that working means you can't just be too, like, unilateral in your demands. There has to be a consensus. All right, having said that, though, uh, states are your automatic method for, oh, shit. for if you want to try out different laws, right? You just try out a different law. I mean, abortion. I want women to be able to get abortions, but basically, um, you know, it's like murder up to states. If states make it illegal, you know, that's fine. I mean, it's not fine with me. I get to vote about it. But the local popul populace is supposed to be able to decide on these serious things of like, well, what counts as self-defense? What counts as murder? What, you know, what counts as child abuse? What counts as all these serious things? What counts as a required medical procedure that a parent has to do to save their child's life? Or, you know, is there any such thing? And you know, all of these important laws are supposed to be left to, or not supposed to necessarily be left to the states, but they get left to the states, and the states come up with very similar solutions. I would say at that point, you might want to standardize it in a federal law, but when it's going the other way, you just go the other way. 
You know, if you disagree on abortion, then you do it by the states. Now, I don't think that it should be constitutional for, like, Georgia or whoever it was to, to say, well, if you go across state lines and get an abortion, you broke our laws. No, like, if you go gamble in Nevada, you can't get arrested by Utah. You're not allowed to gamble. No, in there, it's a territorial thing when they're in your, when you're in that state then it, its laws apply so you do have a problem of yeah but people can grow across the border some states make guns totally illegal um, but there's free travel across the border you start to have a problem and if you're going to inspect people at the border you got an expense and and a problem so you don't want it, that situation you don't want to have to rely on you know the fact that you can devolve any law to the states no matter how terrible it is you could devolve it back to the states well i mean there's certain laws that are specifically in the constitution things that are the domain of the federal government so that you know some things would be hard and i'm not saying you'd want to i'm saying actually the opposite you would like to have things people agree on and and have federal standards you know um, including just for the purposes of agreement, like, you know, what are the standard bolt sizes? Why? Just to make it easier to do business. But also on these life and death issues, um, corporal punishment, all, all kinds of things. Trying to force everybody else, um, you know, you can paint that like a noble thing, but it's not how democracy works. So if everybody's still, um, you know, uh, I don't know. Has an irrational fear. They get to vote. They get a say in whether it's irrational or not. Now, you run into problems with human rights violations, but, you know, if you're erring, it's, it's democracy is going to decide on those things. You know, and, um, and as long as we're a union, we're going to have some laws in common. So you get civil rights legislation and standards uh, that go across state lines. Um, if somebody just wants to be like, yeah, all the laws, I hate all the laws from Washington, then they just want to break up the union and have each state be its, its own nation. And if that happens, believe me, the people in that nation will, you know, they'll be voting whether you can have an abortion or whatever. So to me, I separate, like, the argument, the pro-choice argument to me is separated from whether, you know, what, you don't need to invade another country because you have disagreements like that. And if you're in a union with that's of mo many states, like the United States, um, pretty unique, uh, then, you know, there's a wide variety of differences between the, these state laws. And that's the way it's always been. And, and we could utilize that. Um, because, you know, it's, it's one of the designs where we are an ongoing experiment in democracy because we have this laboratory where people can try these fiscal policies in one state. And um, you know, so that's our ultimate go-to on making things work out. Oh, dang. Now, again, the human rights things, it's like, but I don't really want to let one state, um, like, have camps and one state not have camps. You can't have one state that, you know, does have the military and one that doesn't. So, you know, there's, there's a big line of where to, to draw that. But, <clears throat> you know, I, I think if we're going to have problems like, Oh my God, I don't want to deal with those people. They're talking about what, you know, Berkeley's talking, the Berkeley City Council's talking about removing old gender. It's not a manhole. It's a sewage cover. And, you know, they're doing that and people are just so incensed. It's like nobody's going to die from people figuring out how to talk more carefully or deciding what the official grammar rule is for official documents, you know. 
just l let them do it. If that's a problem, you don't want to do any cooperation, any laws in common, then yeah, let's just split it up into states. Otherwise, right now, I mean, I think we're going to see uh, with the, the Trump imperial presidency, which was a continuation of Obama's doing it, which is a continuation of W's doing it, which was a continuation of Clinton's doing it, which was a continuation of Reagan, really. Reagan's the one that really stepped it up like, hey, we could just rule through these things. We don't even change the laws. It'll just be which laws we enforce and everything. We can have laws about everything. And then and then uh, the president just decides which ones to enforce and gets to have any set of laws they want. Even have contradictory laws. So that that is like, with Trump, it's just gotten so obvious because people are so... Um, you know, pissed off by the brazenness of the attitudes and things, you know, like people are. And uh, that what you're going to see is like with this California thing, more the fact that states actually do have a tremendous amount of power already, um, depending on how much they're dependent on, like federal dollars for this or that and stuff. So uh, I think you're going to see more like stiff arming kind of actions by states. So as far as I know, states, um, states like, they have some rights to stop you from coming in and out. And they can't charge you a tax for moving goods back and forth, but they can stop the good coming back and forth. So they could get pretty hard ass. You know, if, if a governor wanted to be a hard ass in the style of Trump, uh, it could cause a lot of trouble. And I think we might have that situation in a couple liberal states with strong enough economies to um, oh, to get away with it. So how are you gonna like it then? But really, I like the ideas to discuss them and then using that uh, what you learn to make like solutions. And nobody really seems interested in being creative about the solution. So either already know what it is, the answer, and nobody else will agree with them. Or they, and they don't really want to discuss, like, the details of, you know, different ways of implementing it or whatever, even. Or they don't think there is a solution. Or, you know, they just, it's, nobody just wants to, um, like, think through what are the real differences from the point of view of, look, both types of people that are going to still be here, you know, not just the nice words, but the racist and the anti-racist, the racists that are one race and the racists that are a different race, the, the, you know, the people that are squeamish about the, the shape of the bathroom and people that are afraid of spiders and people that aren't afraid of spiders and people that love sharks and people that think you could kill all sharks and people, everybody is going to be here and these major divisions between what we call you know the left and the right and all the divisions inside the left and inside the right you know it's these many many kinds of divisions and breakdowns um we're trying to figure out a way that we can all have our systems tried out right if there's a hundred million people that think hey a few more social programs are a good idea we ought to be able to get together and do those social programs I mean, the other 100 million that don't shouldn't be able to stop us, and the 125 million that don't know what they want or that conversation's going on should not be able to stop us, and you have to divide down or whatever it takes. But everybody's just here hoping that, like, no, the very next election, you know, my philosophy is going to finally take over after thousands of years. It's just going to suddenly change. It's been changing slowly for thousands of years, always with the two divisions. But now next year is, no, we've got to be able to do things in the meanwhile, man. We need to, you know. Uh, and if you really are insisting on building your kid camps, I'd rather be in another country than you. If you really think, oh, no, torture is totally necessary. That's how I stay safe then, yeah, I think we need to be in different countries or something. And if you're pretending, no, you're not for torture, but things I call torture aren't torture, then we have to have that conversation a little more seriously because I don't care what you call Abu Ghraib, I don't want my tax money going for it, right? 
It doesn't matter what you call it. We have an actual disagreement on you like that kind of thing and I don't. So, and since it's done to other people, I have a problem with that. You know, that's worse than whether abortion even is, is legal. You're going out and other people are getting tortured because you're suspicious of them. That's worse than, you know, defining a murder such a way that women don't have autonomy over their own body. Right? And I think both of them are pretty bad. But it's just like punching someone in the face. It's not as bad as uh, stabbing them in the face. It's not as bad as uh, killing them. Really didn't do too good. People need to grow up. You know, people are like like all the people that want to mock and uh, like, oh yeah, well what about this? And oh, and you're on the wrong side of history or this or th this kinds of things everybody wants to do. And you know, I would like to make your one-liners and stuff as well. So there's nothing wrong with that, but there can't just be a diet of that, right? You're going to have to realize that none of those one-liners, they, they feel good, they're funny, you should practice them, it's, it's part of getting your communication down. But don't actually believe that suddenly you're going to meme all the conservatives into liberalism or all the liberals into conservatism. And even if you manage to get the edge of 55% or you jerry-rig and you don't need 55%, but you've got the... 55% to control everything and then you think you're gonna force your ideas on everybody else with because you got the the president or the president in the house and all these things you you know if you're forced as as the conservatives well know when they're the ones in the minority getting forced you're like people are gonna get upset it's gonna get to a problem yes you have to figure out a way to split it up and say well in this state we'll do that and that state will do this you know there's no other uh, There's no other way or, or there's no justification um, for even having a nation. I'm just spectating now. There's no other excuse for having a nation where a huge number of the people don't get their way. You know, don't get their laws tried. Don't, don't ever get a chance to experiment with their idea of a good social program. You know? It's always the opera and never the skateboard park, you know. A little bit of everything needs to be done, including people that might be in a perpetual minority for a lot of reasons, like not interested in politics could be a reason. But more often we'd say, no, it's the interest in politics, but, you know, people get disenfranchised for other reasons, like you need money to be influential in politics or have the time to take part even in, in volunteer politics a lot, though that's not literally true. I know a lot of working class and even homeless people that manage to take part in, um, you know, in the political process, but, but still it's, um, you know, there's a bias. People that have a lot of money, then you get have a lot more freedom to take part in that and make a difference. Both the free time and the ability to fund stuff. So... You know, everybody's got to be thinking in terms of there's still going to be liberals here. I mean, the people doing the, the politically correct project of, hey, maybe we could figure out pronouns that won't bother anybody. And maybe we could figure out a way to not insult people when we talk to them. It may be on accident or on purpose. Maybe we could. Figure, yeah, you don't want to be a part of that project. OK, go watch baseball or whatever you are into. <laughs> Those people are doing that because they're like, hey, you know, it's not that easy. It's not that easy to, to be thoughtful about what people have been through in the world, you know, when you're calling someone a fat so or whatever, and oh, it's a medical condition. I mean, why even have to worry about those things? Well, I don't care about that. Yeah, nobody's really making you say anything. They're, you know, the DSA convention was discussing how what what this group. Hey, what do we think the decorum should be? Right. Sometimes you could cuss at the people in your Senate group, and sometimes you can't. Depends on the country. Depends on their rules they're Roberts or not right so I mean it's not going to just suddenly be that 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 this other side goes away 
they have to be have room to do their own project and figure out the gender pronouns they want to use. You're like, but I'm not going to use them. Okay, welcome to not being the same exact culture. It's just like if people want to go and uh, investigate being uh, Pastafarians, that doesn't mean you're going to have to become a Pastafarian. Okay, it's not an insult to your religion that maybe some of your kids in your religion decide to become Pastafarians instead of Mormons or whatever. That's just the way it goes and you're going to have to deal with it. So that kind of panic that, oh my God, not everybody you know, has my same cultural likes. They eat different kind of food and they have different sports teams they prefer. I mean, it's just like that you're just going to have to deal with by separating out from the people. And the only problem is when people are when the real violence and the, the money spending is involved in a way that is taken as violent or even just wasteful, right? On both sides. Yeah, the conservatives think we're wasting money. Okay, then let's split up because I don't. I think you're wasting money, right? So it goes both ways. We either figure out a way to work at the same union or we separate up. And since we have the federated union, we can just partially separate. Just separate the things that we can't agree on. And then we're just left with things like, you think it's okay to torture our enemies, and I don't. One of us has to win that.